talk to you briefly about uh, some of the newest technologies that are becoming available to guide uh, nitrogen application in our winter annual cereals and today specifically on soft red winter wheat here in uh, western Kentucky. Uh, one of the technologies that I'm going to be showing you here is a uh, normalized difference vegetative index canopy sensor. I'm going to be using a handheld unit but there are commercial units available that um, can be attached to application equipment and literally, particularly with liquid nitrogen applicators, can literally guide different sets of nozzles so that as the applicator moves across the field, uh, the nitrogen rate can be adjusted on the go uh, based on the results of the canopy sensor being fed directly into first an algorithm that resets the rate and then uh, valves that then adjust the rate of nitrogen uh, leaving the applicator. This technology is based on a principle of uh, primarily how much biomass you have but also secondarily with this particular canopy sensors that we're using in wheat it's also based on the color. So a crop that's thin is going to receive a little extra dose of nitrogen or an area of the field that's thin. An area of the field that's also a little bit undercolored, it's a little bit yellow or light green relative to say an N-rich strip is also going to receive an extra dose of nitrogen. The technology is sensitive to differences in varieties so you do need an N-rich strip within a field within that particular variety so that you set the sensor for kind of a maximum value and then what happens is you'll know um, as the sensors move across the field for let's say a variety that tends to be a little paler you'll still know what its N-rich reference is and then for those areas that fall uh, too far below that uh, a dose of nitrogen would be recommended and that dose would be proportional to how big that difference is uh, between the N-rich strip and that particular area. Okay, the first value we get from this pretty good looking area of wheat is a 0 0.73. Now I'm going to return and do the next plot over which is, isn't quite as nice uh, an area of wheat. This value comes out substantially less, it's about 0 0.65. So this area over here would, by the algorithm, receive a larger dose of nitrogen than the first area. And then depending upon the value for the N-rich strip, which might be even greater than that, both areas might receive some nitrogen. The difference primarily in those two areas is really a difference in stand. There's some thin areas in the second strip. So a producer would need to consider carefully whether you can really make up for thin areas with an extra dose of nitrogen or no, maybe not, but it is a consideration. The way this technology works is it shoots a beam of light down to the surface and then what comes back in terms of reflectance is measured and this normalized difference vegetative index or NDVI value is calculated from that. These handheld units are very useful for consultants and we do see consultants using these as they walk through fields to kind of check things out. Um, but this is not what would typically be mounted on the front of a nitrogen applicator. This, is, this unit is used in research and in consulting. This particular unit is a handheld unit. It is not uh, the kind of unit that would be mounted on an applicator. But again, the technology is similar. What you have here is a light source. It emits the light down to the surface, and what it measures is the light that's reflected back. That light reflection is put through the algorithm, and this normalized difference vegetative index is calculated. And then the NDVI value is used in a subsequent algorithm, either by the consultant or by the applicator, to guide that nitrogen application. Again. Uh, Remember that this kind of a sensor is more heavily a biomass sensor than a color sensor. 
and there are other things in a wheat field that could cause it to give a lower NDVI value, anything that stunts the crop. So a producer or a consultant would have to understand those particular factors for a given field in order to be sure of the nitrogen recommendation they might give as a result of using uh, this technology. Uh, this afternoon, uh, here in an in a area of wheat uh, at the Research and Education Center here at Princeton, I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to use one of the technologies that is now becoming available to help uh, producers or consultants determine uh, a nitrogen rate recommendation for soft red winter wheat. Uh, it could be used for other small grains, but uh, for the state of Kentucky, most of our data is on soft red winter wheat, and most of our um, nitrogen rate algorithms are based in that. This technology is called a chlorophyll meter. It is used to determine the nitrogen status of the leaf tissue. And what we do here is we have a device that we, as we insert the leaf between these two components of it, we then make a measurement of the amount of light that's transmitted. And the light is in a bandwidth that's where chlorophyll sensitivity is established. The amount of light that's absorbed is determined relative from what was sent into the sensor versus what goes through into the other sensor on the other side. So the meter determines the amount of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll status is proportional to the nitrogen status of that tissue because one of the big things that nitrogen is used for in the plant is to create chlorophyll, to create that amount of photosynthetic sink that you have, uh, and that determines a lot of yield potential. So this technology is very useful on young wheat in order to determine then whether it needs more or less nitrogen uh, to complete its life cycle and make a, a good yield but yet do it economically uh, for that producer. This technology does have to be calibrated. So I have a device here that's really a, a screen set up at a particular wavelength. You insert it in here and take a reading and then that reading can be checked against a particular uh, value that's needed for this particular instrument. These are case-by-case -case instruments so they come with their own pre-calibrated tool uh, in this regard. And right now this one is reading very close to what was its predetermined calibration value. What we're going to do here is show what part of a wheat tiller, in this case I've already pulled a tiller off of a wheat plant, and we're going to show what part of that leaf tissue we're going to use. We're not going to use the small leaf in the center, and we're not going to use necessarily the one that doesn't have a full collar. We want to find the youngest leaf that still has a full collar, and then we remove that and get it ready to put in the instrument. If you look at the length of this particular leaf, it has a lesion here where an insect has taken out part of it. You don't want to put that into it. And you don't want to be down here next to the collar because that's not your typical uh, place you want to take this data. You want to be kind of in the center. You want to make sure you don't have any lesions due to a disease or insect damage. You place it inside this instrument and you line it up. There's two lines here you can line up on. You press down and it makes a reading. The value shown here is a 53.2, which is a fairly high reading. This technology, you do need to have an N-rich strip that you take data on so you know the high values for a particular wheat variety that you're going to be uh, using as your N-rich value. And then you compare the numbers you're getting against that, and the closer you are to that enriched value, the less fertilizer you're going to need. The farther away from it that you are, the more fertilizer you're going to need. So this particular leaf gave a 53.2. Most consultants, most producers who use this technology are going to have to walk through the field and take a number of samples. I've got another one here, so I'm going to do the same thing on and it probably won't give me the same result. Again, I find the plant, I find the leaf that has the collar. 
I look at the leaf to make sure that the leaf is generally in good condition where I'm going to place it in the machine. Center it up, take a reading, and this was a 41.8. So the chlorophyll status on this particular tiller from this plant is somewhat lower than it was from the other plant. That's why you have to have a number of these to get a true understanding of what that population of tillers is showing you in terms of nitrogen status. Then you take that average value, compare it to the average value for the enriched strip, and you'll determine. So this one might need, I happen to know the enriched value here is about a 55, and if I, I, we've already been doing some averaging, so it's right around 51. So this one wouldn't need much more nitrogen at all. Now I'm going to collect a sample from an area that I know has a very low nitrogen status to give you some idea of some of the values we would get from wheat that is actually strongly nitrogen deficient. Before we do that, could you go back? What I have here is a tiller from a wheat plant that is under nitrogen stress. Now I will tell you that this is a pretty obvious nitrogen stress situation. The crop is stunted and the crop is yellow. So this is a way for me to confirm that my chlorophyll meter is indeed giving me data where it is determining the chlorophyll status and thereby the nitrogen status of this crop. Again, I've taken the leaf, youngest leaf that has a collar on it from the upper part of the tiller. I've evaluated it to make sure it doesn't have lesions or any other uh, data distorting features to the leaf. And I line it up. This is going to be a little harder because, again, this leaf is smaller because it's been stunted in its growth. It's not as wide. But we line it up, take a reading, and in this case it's 28, which is about half of what the end rate strip is. So this is a seriously deficient part of the field. In this case it's a plot, but nonetheless it's an indication that a fairly large dose of nitrogen fertilizer would be required at this time for this wheat crop to move ahead and get close to maximum yield potential. And that's where the chlorophyll meter can be very good. The only thing the chlorophyll meter does not give you much of is because you don't have spatial data unless you have a GPS unit attached to this and unless your consultant is equipped with the technology to move across the field fairly rapidly to develop a map for you. This is more used in whole field type situations. It's not as useful a technology as technology that's attached to a nitrogen applicator. But it's still a very good tool for understanding your crop's nitrogen status. So we take our leaf, we lay it across the two, uh, the lower sensor, and then we put the upper sensor in contact with it and it takes a reading. There are some guidelines here to help you make sure you line up the leaf properly uh, with the two sensor units, the one above and the one below. And then you can toss this leaf away and you get another one. Uh, sometimes it works to have two people working, one gathering leaf samples from different spots and then another person collecting the information. This particular unit will average up to 40 or 50 values together so you'll get an average for an area or an average for a field if that's what you desire. This particular unit is a Minolta 502, but there are a number of these available and they generally work well and the University of Kentucky does not endorse any particular one of these units. Uh, what we're interested in is helping producers understand how to use this technology to improve their nitrogen management for soft red winter wheat.